Blue, Indiana in white. And in the circle. Yegor Masherikov. And for Indiana, number 30, William Gladness. Final game of the evening from the South Region in Orlando. Indiana controls the tip and Gladness can't hold on. Yes, Indiana trying to strike quickly. Man to man for the Hoosiers. Dante Rogers out of Baltimore, Maryland. King down to Masherikov. Triple team. Welcome to Orlando, the fourth and final game of the evening. Indiana seeded number six, George Washington, the 11th seed, and George Washington going up early, two to nothing on the Gongba. Jump shot and the bracket here in the South region. Creighton upset Louisville. Maryland handled Valpo, and St. John's beat Zamford. They await the winner of this game. Gus, we talked before the game about Shantae Rogers and A.J. Guyton. They are matched up against one another on both ends of the court. And the first free throw is good. Don't forget, coming up next, University of Texas San Antonio versus UConn, Weber State in North Carolina. Those of you awaiting those games, we will get you there as soon as they start and keep you updated on the progress of this game with Highlights and updates. Rogers baseline. Masherikov too short. And Luke Recker the other way. Oh boy, Richardson just really laid a screen on my King. King, King is going to be checking to see if all the parts still function. Recker on the wing, stripped away by King. Into the hands of Gongba. Shantae Rogers in the front court. It's slippery on that floor right now for Rogers. Changes directions and he lost it out of bounds. Gus, already we can see part of the Indiana strategy. When Rogers goes off screens, the screener's man comes to get him and double team him. Bob Knight trying to make him give up that basketball earlier than he wants to. Bob Knight has so much respect for Shantae Rogers. Loves to watch the young man play basketball. Says that he not only is an inspiration on the basketball court, he's just an inspiration, period. That's what he told us yesterday at practice. So Rogers, the A-10 player of the year, averages 20 a game. Indiana, they've turned it over three times already. There's that double team trying to get Rodgers to give up the ball, and Rodgers is trying to throw it off Hasten, but the first thing that ball hit out of bounds was Shantae Rodgers, and so that means it's out of bounds off Rodgers, and Indiana will get it. And a look around the country, Maryland beating Valpo easily here in Orlando. And Creighton upsetting Louisville up 10, beating a 7. Gladness on the baseline. Guarded by Masherikov, quick shot by Wrecker, and he knocks it down. Wrecker is one of those guys, Gus, who plays the game with a bounce and an enthusiasm that is just simply fun, and there is a turnover. That's not very much fun for George Washington, but Wrecker is just a delight to watch him play basketball. Three turnovers already for GW, three for Indiana. Wrecker on the wing, guarded by King, goes baseline and is tripped. So Luke Recker tripped by Mike King. He's a sophomore from Baltimore, Maryland as well. Some great players in that Baltimore area. Couple in this bracket, Bootsy Thornton, St. John, along with King. Rogers inside, and the ball knocked away. Larry Richardson has it blocked into the hands of Rogers. Masherikov, double team. Split the double team and turns it over. Another turnover, Gus. George Washington really hurting themselves. Four turnovers. You're not going to score very many points if you don't shoot the ball. And a whistle and foul. 
Tom Pender's team's known for their defensive pressure. The rotation that time is excellent. On the last play as Masherikov gets over and blocks Richardson's shot. Richardson called for an illegal screen. And the first foul on Richardson. Rodgers, King, Iturbe, Gongba, and Masherikov on the court for GW. Gongba, 16-footer. Rebounded by Richardson. Gus, Indiana not really guarding Gongba very closely. Wrecker got caught that time with the double dribble. Tried to get it down the floor to Haston. Bob Knight keeping his cool on the bench. Don't forget, coming up next, some of you will see UConn battle the University of Texas San Antonio or Weber State and North Carolina, and we will keep you up to date on the progress of this game, George Washington and Indiana. Thus far, Indiana doing a pretty good job forcing Rodgers to give up the ball. Richardson gets another foul, pushing against Gongla. The other thing that Indiana has done is they've made Masherikov give up the ball by double teaming and leaving Gongbo alone. Second foul on Richardson. King inbounding it to Rodgers. Richardson pops out. Rodgers got it away. Looked for the foul. Knocked out of bounds. We stay right here. Sixteen minutes, forty-one seconds remaining in the first half of play. Turkey jerky game. Masherikov all alone. And how did he get that wide open? And he lays it up and in. GW up four to three. Good screen on the inside when you play man-to-man -man defense on those underneath out-of-bounds plays. That's a risk that you take. And a challenge for A.J. Guyton, Danny, against Rodgers, who can pick his pocket with no problem. Haston. And he knocks down the 15-footer. Haston. Haston is a very skilled big man. He's not really muscular, but he's got good quick feet and a nice jump shot. Redshirted last year, only a freshman. King. Iturbe with the rebound. They reverse it. Rodgers down the lane. Nice hands by Gomba, but he travels. Good call. Gus, it was nice hands, but his feet got away from him just a little bit. Washington for Indiana. And how about A.J. Guyton? Rodgers is the all-time steals leader at GW. And having to bring the ball up the floor against a guy that's so low to the ground, that must be hard. It really keeps a lot of pressure on you. Guyton, such a big uh, offensive factor. And there, Rodgers has it. With the steal, Rodgers pull up three. A knock out of bounds, and it's last touched by Indiana. 15.43 to go. First down for play, GW. on Tuesday and it was 27 hours later before they finally arrived in Orlando. They spent time, a lot of time on buses and waiting around in airports and they finally had to bump their band and cheerleaders to catch the flight here to get ready for this game. So a tough trip and not a lot of practice time for GW. Tom Fenders, he said when he got off the plane he did not know where he was. <laughs> I don't know where I am. They got here at about 3 o'clock. And so far, the early story in this game, turnovers. Indiana with six, and the Colonials with five. That's the point Barry made about practice time, I think, is significant. Masherikov passes it to Gongba, and you see they're not really guarding Pat Patrick Gongba. Ike King inside, the runner no good, and he's fouled. Now, don't forget, coming up, we will take some of you to the North Carolina Weber State game. And you will be kept up to date on what's going on right here in Orlando, the South Region. So, Mike King at the line, averages 15 points a game. First free throw is good. He is only a sophomore. Just the big three for George Washington in terms of the offense are Rodgers, King, and Masherikov. Second free throw, no good. Hasted with the board. 
A.J. Guyton has been quiet, having a hard time bringing it up the floor on Rodgers already. Picked one time. Rodgers. Guyton pull up jumper. Bang. Three. Gus Guyton is a pretty tough kid. He's not going to let Rodgers bother him. It puts a lot more pressure on Guyton, but that time just a quick dribble. Certainly Rodgers isn't going to block his shot. King the other way and an over-the-back foul on Masherikov. For non-stop tournament action with live scores and updated brackets in the tournament tracker, go to cbs.sportsline.com or on America Online, enter keyword CBS Sportsline. Inside, nice looking move. Land Washington, Tom great Pender. ball fake. Tom Penders thinks it was a move that looked an awful lot like a travel. Junior from San Jose, California. King, 16-footer off the front of the rim. And Washington comes down with the rebound. Just thus far, the Indiana defense has done a nice job shutting off the three guys we talked about. And there, Gladness slips inside the sheriff off for the easy basket. So Indiana up 12-5. Under 15 to go here in the first half of play. Quick scoring for the Hoosiers. They're on a 7-0 run. Lobbed inside, he turbate, knocked away, and stolen by Wrecker. Boy, that's a nice play by Wrecker, anticipating the pass. Shovel pass, aced it. He's fouled. Yes, Indiana doing a real nice job at the moment, cutting off what George Washington wants to do on the offensive end, and then turning the Colonial struggles into easy offense for themselves. First free throw for Hasted is good, and that's Larry Richardson getting his back massage on the sideline. 14-5. That's not good news for Indiana. They figured to need Richardson against the bigger, stronger Colonials. And a pushing foul on Guyton. Now Rogers wants to take over a little bit. Just right at A.J. Guyton. Richardson hurt that back in the Illinois game. And they're working on it. They do expect him to return. Mike King inbounding on the baseline. The share call. Pull up. 17-footer off the back rim. Rodgers with the board. Masherikov again. Off the back rim again. And it's rebounded by Washington. Indiana on the break. Great ball movement. Record short arms the layup. But right there is William Gladness. Gus, Indiana just doing a great job running the floor right at the moment. They are beating George Washington to the spots, both on offense and on defense. 11-0 run for the Hoosiers. And Rodgers travels. Yes, there is the double team once again. Shante Rogers, every time he thinks he's got an opening, there's a double team, particularly when Gongba sets the screen. Indiana simply ignoring Gongba. They're double teaming Shante Rogers, and that has really disrupted the Colonials' offensive flow. Skip pass, A.J. Guyton. Wraps it around inside. Hasted, jump book, and the follow by Gladness. This kid's everywhere. Indiana on a 13-0 run. And with 12.50 to go in the first half of play, they lead it 18-5. I think the key there is the people shooting the ball for George Washington, the Indiana defense has kept the ball out of the hands of King, of Masherikov, of Rogers in good scoring position. And Tom Pender's kids simply are not picking it up on the defensive end. Mike Easy King. baskets for Indiana. Now Rogers. Got the screen, pull up three, short. Rebounded by Wrecker. Guyton, nice look back to Wrecker from the two-hand jam. Indiana, textbook basketball right now. Masherikov, baseline, tough shot, 
And he hits. Gustin, I think all you have to do is compare the last Indiana basket with that George Washington basket. The Indiana basket totally uncontested. Misharikoff with three guys against him. I guarantee you, under those circumstances, Indiana is going to shoot a better percentage. 20 to 7. Hoosiers. And a whistle and foul away from the ball. And it's against Gongba. Tom Penders working the officials over on the sideline, claiming that Indiana's setting illegal screens, but he's not having much luck. Right now, Indiana with all the luck, they're up 27. And the game summary. Take a look. Indiana, they went on a 15-0 run, which was broken by Mashirikov's basket, but they scored 15 points in a span of less than three minutes. Just easy baskets. Too many easy opportunities for Indiana, and the Hoosiers simply taking advantage. The only thing they've done so far is they've missed the extra point. <laughs> A.J. Guyton, guarded by Rodgers. Working his way inside, leans in. And Gongba snatches it down. George Washington needs to get some easy baskets in transition. Gongba the other way for three. Rebounded inside by Washington. He's been a spark off the Indiana bench. Guyton, impressed by Rogers. Guyton, hesitation. Record 20-footer. And the rebound to Mashirikov. That's better defense on that particular occasion by George Washington. Mashirikov wheeling, pulling up and hits. Well, guess he showed us that turnaround jump shot from either side. Yegor Mashirikov from Minsk, Belarus. He's 6'9", already a graduate student at GW. Gus, and there's a foul on Mike King trying to pressure the ball. That's two fouls on King. We mentioned Mike King, one of the three guys that does a lot of the scoring for George Washington, averaging better than 15 points a game. And already, we haven't played 10 minutes yet, and he's got two personal fouls. Has to play smarter into the game. Albert Roma, a seven-foot freshman from Spain. Record down the lane, left-hand runner, and it's in. Now, so that's a real good move by Indiana to let Wrecker handle the ball some so Guyton doesn't have to struggle against Rodgers the entire game. Wrecker, a real good ball handler. And Luke Wrecker with six. Masherikov again, blocked. Washington pinned it on the glass. Wrecker, speed dribble into the front court. Baseline, short. Washington and a whistling foul. Yes, we talked about Wrecker and his ability to handle the ball. Not necessarily the quickest guy in the world, but very clever with his ball handling. The spin, once he feels King on his back, and then Wrecker very able to take it to the basket and very enthusiastic about taking it to the basket, switching hands and laying it in. Scores of other games, Carolina up early, Iowa beating UAB today. And a substitute into the game. Number 23, Rob Turner for Indiana, a senior from Wilmington, Delaware. Sherikov for three. Gladness with the ball. Dane Fife in the game as well for Indiana, number 11. Inside, Haston, jump hook. Yes, they're just not getting to the Indiana offensive players. I'm talking about George Washington, Indiana able to do whatever they want. Roma lost it into the hands of Mishirikov. Right now, Rodgers needs to look for his offense as well. Roma in the pivot, turnaround jumper, and air ball. Got it back. 
Gus, everything looks like a struggle for George Washington on the offensive end. Rodgers oh, down the shot! Left. What a play! Gus, Holy like mackerel! I guess when you're five feet four, you got to be able to make shots like that. But how entertaining was that, huh? 24 to 11. Turner. Turner down the lane, the scoop. Roma with the rebound, and he goes down hard. George Washington has really struggled on the offensive end. Gus, you talked about Rodgers needing to create his offense. Gladness comes over, swats at it, but Rodgers holds it all the way out in his right hand. Watch him extend with his right hand, hold off Gladness with his left arm, and get the little flip with the wrist. Kind of gave him the Heisman Trophy there. And that's some strength there to hold off the guy where you get the ball at arm's length. A share of call. Inside, he's fouled. Nice look from Rodgers. So on the floor for George Washington. Third foul bill on Gladness, Roma, Masherikov, Rodgers, Royale, and Iturbe. George Washington with 10 international players on their team. That's the most on any team in the NCAA. Gus, and some problems for Indiana. Gladness with three personal fouls. Richardson's over there with the bad back. We were told he might come back in the game, but he's still lying on the floor over there on the sidelines. So George Washington, there's Richardson. They haven't had much success on the offensive end, but they're starting to get the Hoosiers in some foul trouble inside. Second free throw, Masherikov is good. 24 to 12, 844 to go first half of play, token pressure by the Colonials. Rob Turner brings it up the floor. Dane Fife, a freshman from Clarkston, Michigan. On the floor as well for Indiana, number 11. Also, Jared Odom. And a whistle and foul away from the ball. Yes, and that, again, an illegal screen. Indiana out there running their motion offense with lots of screens. And George Washington doing a better job that time trying to fight through the screen. And oftentimes, when you work hard to fight through the screen, it appears to the official as if the screen is moving and you get the call. A.J. Guyton and Fife go out of the game. And into the game, Michael Lewis and Luke Recker, along with Turner, Haston, and see the other player on the baseline. Rodgers, first free throw is good. Jared Odell also on the team. Let's check in with Barry Booker. Larry Richardson, the Indiana center, has ice all over his back and is not feeling well at all. They're expecting him to not play the rest of the half. Gus? So another blow for Indiana. 8.25 to go in the first half of play. They have foul trouble and injuries. Forcing them to go a little smaller than they would like. And a whistle. Royale with the foul. And Tom Penders is over there telling the official, that's a moving screen. And that's the argument that Tom Penders is trying to make. Penders is telling his kids, fight through those screens and we'll get the calls, but that time the call went against him. Record misses the free throw. Rodgers. Pull up, three. Bam! Shante starting to light up a little. He has seven. 24-17 now. Leads his team in three-point baskets. Odell stripped away into the hands of Rodgers. Rodgers, jump stop, thought about the three. Royale, he takes it and hits! That's George Washington scores nearly 80 points a game. They can put up some offensive numbers. 10-0 run for the Colonials. Bob Turner, top of the key. Inside, nice look. Wrecker missed it, got it back, and he draws the five. Now he can get that ball back as long as it hits either the rim or the backboard. Guess he's allowed to recover it if somebody else hits the ball. And Masherikov now with his second personal foul. So Luke Recker, sophomore from Auburn, Indiana. 
And he got the first one to drop. Tail of two years for record last year, averaged about 13 a game, and those numbers are up 16 points and four rebounds. And he has to score along with Guyton for this team to be successful. Wrecker is one of those guys, guess it always looks like he's enjoying himself out on the basketball court. And the free throw is good, 7.23 to go. In the first half of play, IU up 26-19. Databank. And Tom Penders in the NCAA, three different teams, Rhode Island. What a great story that was. Their 1988 Sweet 16 bid and then the taking over the job at Texas where the Texas program was at an all-time low and then moving in to George Washington. In fact, George Washington is the first job that Tom Penders has ever taken where he wasn't being required to do a complete rebuilding job. There, Misharikov picks up his third foul. What a smart play by Wrecker to step in front and draw the charge. Not a smart play by Misharikov. Now Misharikov with three. He'll have to sit down. Gus, how many times have you seen it? A guy who's in foul trouble, whether it be two fouls or three fouls, depending upon the situation of the game, he can be careful on defense, but they usually pick up that foul on offense, and that's exactly that's what happened to Misharikov. So Luke Recker at the line. Recker with eight points. And they get nine. And the second free throw, good. Guess you're talking about Wrecker having to score for Indiana. Well, he's already in double figures tonight. Rodgers pull up three. Loose ball rebounded by Guyton. That was a good defensive effort by Guyton. He didn't let Rodgers buy. Michael Lewis. Guyton around the screen, 15-footer, rattles down. Because Guyton did a great job getting himself stopped so he could go straight up in the air with that jump shot. It's fun to watch Indiana play. They do all those little things that coaches try to teach you growing up. Jump shot up top, Royale hits. Lewis, bounce pass inside, count it, and the foul. Gus, that is good aggressive offense by Indiana, but it's just not very good defense by George Washington, letting the guy penetrate all the way up to court and make the easy pass. Hasted. Lewis, of course, outstanding with his assists. Getting the ball to Haston, who does a nice job receiving the ball. That's a tough catch by Haston. He catches the ball, goes right to the basket, draws the foul. Right now, Tom Fenders with some words for his bench. Haston adds the free throw. He has nine points. Wrecker has eight points. Make it ten points, and Guyton with six. And with Misharikov on the bench, a lot of pressure on Rodgers and King to try to produce some offense here. And, and there's offensive another offensive foul. foul. Third foul on King. Now Saturday on CBS, meet two private eyes who have learned from the best. From the producers of Walker, Texas Ranger. It's the next generation of justice at all new Sons of Thunder with special guest appearance by Chuck Norris, Saturday on CBS. That's there again, offensive foul being the third foul. Now Rogers steals the basketball. Let's see if George Washington can convert it. He'll pull up and take the three off the dribble. Cut off this time by Lewis. Sets the screen. King. Indiana not really paying a lot of attention to Eterbe and Gongba. Giving a lot of help where they can. Royale. Gongba on the baseline. And that's a, good, that's a good defensive series. You want Gongba to be shooting that one. Michael Lewis. Indiana getting out and filling the lanes and getting easy baskets. Gus, that's really been the story. George Washington having to work real hard for whatever they get, and Indiana just taking it down the court, creating some easy opportunity. Rodgers tips in. <laughs> Short. <laughs> He's got them all. He's got every trick in the book. But his tricks are not helping his team right at the moment. Eterbe picks up that foul. 
and Kermit is third. So Mike Jarvis, excuse me, Tom Pender. <laughs> I, was, I was hoping not to do that. Tom Pender substituting, and he's going to bring Masherikov back into the game. Turbe has three personal fouls. Masherikov has three personal fouls. King has three personal fouls. Indiana making a living at the free throw line. So Masherikov back into the game along with Seiko Camara, senior from Lisbon, Portugal. Second free throw by Hastings, also good. So Wrecker's already in double figures. Hasten is already in double figures. This Indiana offense just running on high octane right at the moment. 37-21. Long book, quick turn on the baseline. Underneath, cut off, forced it up, got it back, split the D, and he's fouled. Gong was showing you good quickness, and Gus, that's a much better play by Gong by that time. He is going to be most effective right around the basket, so he didn't try the 15-footer that time. Took it to the basket with a strong move. Patrick Gongba from the African Republic, Central African Republic. This is the first Saturday on CBS. Martial arts superstar Samo Hung and Arsenio Hall are kicking the fun back into Saturday. Join the LAPD's dream team in the action series Martial Law on Saturday. Samo Hong. Gongba, second free throw is good. And a substitution in the game. Francisco Di Miranda comes in. Gongba takes a seat. Full court pressure now by GW. Camera. Picking up Wrecker, full court, and Wrecker breaks it easily. Titan, around the screen, pulling up. Lewis with the rebound, out of bounds. And it's last touch by Shante Rogers. Foul trouble for GW. Three guys, and these are important players for George Washington with three personal fouls. Gladness with those three for Indiana, we might add, as Indiana turns the ball over, Gus, that Richardson is injured and not able to play, so Indiana has two big guys with a problem. And the big score to show Detroit leading UCLA 2019 early. Connecticut without Jim Calhoun tonight, who has a case of intestinal, the intestinal flu. Gus in that Weber State, North Carolina score. Weber State up early. Inside a record. Easy baskets for Indiana. A 15-3 run. For the Hoosiers, Royale for three. Short, knocked out of bounds, and we stay right here. Three minutes, 52 seconds to go in the first half of play. Indiana up 39-22.
Indiana up 45-29, 2.18 to go in the first half of play. Hasted inside, De Miranda with the rebound. Indiana getting a lot of easy baskets today. Well, Misharikov is one of the guys that's been giving up some easy baskets since he came back in the game. He throws it away right there. Now don't forget, coming up on Pennzoil at the half, Greg Gumbel and Clark Kellogg will get you updated on all the tournament news. All the scores and highlights, plus a live look at all the action going on in the NCAA tournament. That's all coming up on Pennzoil at the half. A.J. Guyton, ball fake, and a three-second violation called against the Hoosiers. And look at Indiana. They are burning it up, 62%. GW, 33%. Gus, and Indiana is simply getting easier shot opportunities, and they're converting them. Yeah, they're Knocked just throwing out of bounds. Misharikov, we were talking about, he's got three personal fouls, and Tom Penders has him in there because he desperately needs offense. But when they throw the ball to Richardson down in the low post, when well, Indiana does that, I mean, Eric Guyton just dribbles it away. Misharikov can't guard him closely because of those three fouls. Bobby Knight not happy with the turnover in the backcourt by Guyton. Well, Bob Knight knows very clearly that George Washington is a team capable of offensive explosions, and he's got... George Washington on the ropes right now, and he'd really like to see his team put them away. Rodgers, baseline, another jumper. Rebound inside, Masherikov, nice looking play. Boy, Masherikov has come in and he has been very aggressive, and now that lead down to 14. Masherikov with 14 points. Inside, loose ball, picked up on the floor by Washington. 1-12 to go first half. Washington trying to get Masherikov to commit that fourth foul. 13 on the shot clock. A lot of dribbling by Jimenez. Picks it up and a reach-in foul with six seconds to go. Gusson, you're absolutely right. That is not a good decision. Sola really had Jimenez in trouble. Jimenez basically with his back to the basket, 30 feet away, only six seconds on the shot clock. Not a good foul. So Luke Jimenez from Redwood Falls, Minnesota. He was a walk-on. His free throw is no good. Jimenez not a good free throw shooter. Now five of 14 on the year is Jimenez from the free throw line. And Tom Penders with only 58 seconds left, not taking any more chances. Jimenez hits that one. Penders gets Misharikov out of the game. Rodgers the other way. Hands it off to Sola. Sola can hit it from there. He takes it. And it's an air ball. Well, Gus, maybe that would indicate uh, that may be just a little bit out of his range. That was a long shot. And Tom Penders just gets up and walks down to the end of the bench. Has not been a good first half for the Colonials. A.J. Guyton. Indiana still executing that offense. They've done a great job for the most part in the first half. Hasted, pull up oh. jumper right in Gongba's face. Gongba trying to put a body on him, and Hasten, much lighter than Gongba, but hangs in there and sticks the basket. Shot clock turned off, 11 seconds to go. In the first half of play, Rodgers, they clear it out for him, five to go. Royale, and that'll do it. George Washington doesn't get a shot off. Gusson, I think that's the first half in capsule right there. Indiana doing an outstanding job on the defensive end, just totally taking George Washington out of anything they want to do. So Indiana led by as many as 19 in the first half of play, and they got great performances in the first half. Now let's go to Barry Booker, who's standing by with Coach Knight. Great first half, Coach Knight, 48 points on the board. What do you tell your team? Well, we've thrown the ball away a lot, and we got started off with six turnovers right in the beginning, and 
uh, as we got this lead uh, and we've been known to lose leads like this too so we've just got to do the things that uh, that we can do which is what they'll be trying to do also thanks coach back to you Gus all right Barry 13 turnovers for Indiana coming up after this Greg Gumbel in New York Coach Penn, there's a lot of easy baskets for Indiana in the first half. What'd you tell you guys at the half? Well, you're exactly right. I thought our defense uh, allowed them to do too many things. Not enough pressure on the ball. And there's about 98 moving screens out there. Granted, we've got to go through them, make the officials make the call. There's a lot of moving screens, and uh, we've got to play better defense. Offensively, I wasn't happy either. I, we, we've got to play much better. Our team's capable of coming back, but we need to make a solid run early. Thanks, Coach. Back to you, Gus. Gus, they sure did. The two operative words for George Washington related to Indiana are too easy. Everything was too easy for Indiana. They did a great job shooting the basketball. They got to the free throw line 16 times. All right, the statistics from the first half of play. Indiana shot a blistering. 63%. The backcourt, Wrecker and Guyton combining for 26 points, and the turnover's high for both teams. 13 for IU and 11 for GW. Gus, I think it tells you how well Indiana executed their offense in the first half, that even though they had those 13 turnovers, they still scored 48 points. So we are ready to begin the second half of play. What does George Washington have to do to get back into this game? Gus, the first thing they have to do is play better defense. They cannot allow Indiana those easy opportunities. It would be good if they would force some turnovers and create some easy opportunities themselves. But if they're going to turn this game around, it has to be on the defensive end. Mashirikov, Rodgers with three. And Gongbo with the rebound. Mashirikov. Opening moments of the second half of play. Indiana in the first half shot a great percentage, 48 to 31. They lead it. They shot 63% led by their backcourt. Geitman and Recker combining for 26 points. Gus and George Washington only shot 33%, and they haven't started out much better in this half. Great ball movement on the baseline, and Washington missed the eight-footer. And the bracket in the South region here in Orlando, Florida. Creighton upset Louisville. They'll take on Maryland. St. John's waiting for the winner of this game. And talk about, Dan, the fundamentals that Indiana is showing. You don't see them do anything flashy on the court, but they're very effective. Guess what they're doing? They're running their offense. They're running George Washington into screens. Tom Penders has been complaining that they're moving screens. But they keep running George Washington into the screens, and eventually they get the open baskets in their easy looks. Masherikov just picked up his fourth personal foul. A.J. Guyton, Haston also with a good first half. And Tom Penders making no moves to get Masherikov out of the game. Haston at 13. Guyton glides in, and a blocking foul against Gongba. Third foul on Gongba. Thought he had the charge, but Guyton does a nice job getting past, and there Gongba does not set up his position until after Guyton has left the floor. And you've got to establish your defensive position before the offensive player leaves the floor. That's a pretty good call. A.J. Guyton, only a junior. All Big Ten, averages 16 a game. That leads the team. 40% from the field. Junior over 1,500 points in his third year. 49-31. King, Mike King from the elbow, short. Ball tipped back out. And a new shot clock for the Colonials. King across the lane, deals it down. 
Brown off the glass, strong and in. That was just a real good power move by Brown. Giving up a little bit in terms of height. He's only six feet three, but a powerfully built young man, 225 pounds, and used every pound to get that ball up on the board. George Washington now trying to put a little more pressure on the ball. When you do, you make yourself susceptible to drives to the basket. Now let's see who that fouls on. Looks like that's on, on Brown. On Brown. Dorian Brown. Well, they call it on 35. That's Gongba. Not 34, 35. And another foul. And if that's Gongba, I think he's done. With 18.30 to go in the second half. Eighteen thirty left to go in the half, Gus. That is a pretty early exit. And look at the foul trouble for the game for this George Washington team. Masherikov with four, Turbe has three, and Mike King with three. Tom Penders, he's got the coat off now. A love jump shot on the baseline. Boy, and Rogers got away with one right there. He got right into the legs of Guyton and pushed him out of the way. Inside, Roma, baseline, jumper, short, Gladness with the rebound. A.J. Guyton, no look pass down low, and Lynn Washington slams it home. Gus, that's been the story of the game. Easy baskets for Indiana. You don't get much easier than the dunk. We've talked about Guyton and his ability to score, and certainly he draws the attention of George Washington as three guys around him, and that leaves Washington wide open. Drives past his man, draws two others. That's just not very good team defense. Three. Rogers in the corner for three. And Shante Rogers, they call him the small American. That's because he's 5'4", and that's the number he wears on his jersey, number 54. Wrecker. Fouled by Brown. Gus, you would never accuse Luke Recker of being cat quick, but he certainly is a guy who knows when he's got his opponent off balance and when to make his moves to the basket. Inside, all alone, Washington from Recker. Gus, you know it was easy in the first half, but this second half, you talked about Indiana putting on a clinic. It's a seminar right at the moment. Inside, Eterbe, pump fake, missed the layup, and Haston with the board. We thought UCLA and Detroit, Gus, you and I talked about that, this would be a pretty good game, and now we've got some punching going on, and they've caught a technical on Dorian Brown. Weaver State leading North Carolina half as well. George Washington has to be frustrated as Brown battles for the ball against Gladness, knocks Gladness down. Now they have something to say to him there, and the push on Gladness. Gladness had something to say to him. And Brown said, get out of my face. He picked up the technical. Record misses the free throw. That's a little frustration on the part of Brown, but certainly, guess you can understand that. It has really been a struggle tonight for George Washington. And more for record. Right now, when you look into the eyes of the George Washington players, you don't see a sense of urgency. The complacent. No intensity. They trail 54 to 36. King almost with the steal, and yes. King to the basket and lays it in. 54-38 now. Indiana continues to throw the ball away from Rogers. Somebody else bringing it up the court. Outside Wrecker sealing Rogers and the easy layup. One thing you can do with Shantae Rogers is post him up. No help 
available for Rodgers on the inside. Inside, Eterbe missed the layup. And Haston with the rebound. Luke Recker kicks it back out. Haston with the kind roll. Hastings. The iron very kind there. Haston's got a great touch though, Gus. Monte Rogers for three. He's starting to cook up a little bit. Well, he's a guy that's got to cook up a little bit, Gus. In fact, he's got to overheat, if you will. <laughs> Can't be just cooking up a little bit. We've got to get the pot boiling. He's got 13 points. King reaches around from behind and pokes it away. Record of Guyton off the inbounds play, short. King with the rebound. Boy, Haston knocked that away. Time Haston with the good hands, he gets it back and lays it in Haston. from A.J. Guyton. Big fella rewarded for playing good defense. Rodgers slicing, loose ball, saved by Gladness. George Washington turns it over. George Washington really struggling on both ends of the court at the moment, Gus. 14 turnovers for GW, traveling. 15-36 to go, second half of play. Indiana looks good. 60-41, they lead it. The Maryland Terrapins in game one. Got great performances from Steve Francis and Laurent Profit. They win it 82 to 60 over Valpo. The second game, Rodney Buford had nine points in the second half. They beat Louisville 62 58. And then it was St. John's' Ron Artest with 17 points. They defeat Sanford 69 to 43. And this is a look at our region, the South region, in Orlando. Creighton upsetting Louisville. Maryland winning easily, and St. John's ready to take on the winner of this game. It looks like it's going to be Indiana. Rodgers to the hole, rims out, rebounded inside. 15-25 to go, second half of play. Indiana, they've led by as many as 19 points. They're up 60 to 43 right now, but De Miranda is at the line trying to complete the three-point play. And one of the very few times, Gus, since early in the game that George Washington has been able to get anything done on the inside. Andy Miranda, he throw no good, Luke Recker with the ball. Boy, Recker does so many things well. Inside, Gladness banks it home. Gus, that ball hit Eterbe in the hands and he simply couldn't control it. It bounced right off his hands. Indiana gets a basket. Air ball in the corner. De Miranda with the rebound and a whistle and foul inside. Second day of the tournament tomorrow. Early games. George Mason in Cincinnati. Kid for Cincinnati. Melvin Levitt. They call him the helicopter. He's got a 100 vertical. The kid can really jump. <laughs> 100 vertical. I have to tune in for that one. <laughs> And Lamar Odom from Rhode Island. Buzzer beater in the Atlantic 10 tournament, beating Temple. Record baseline pull up. And out of bounds. Of course, Utah, one of the other teams in action. Rodgers, Eterbe, King, Demaranda. And Sola on the court for George Washington. 
And look how Indiana is forcing GW to extend the defense. But that doesn't bother Rodgers. Early in the game, Indiana did a nice job as Rodgers would come off screens, Gus, to double team him and make him give up the ball. That time, George Washington spreading the court. Rodgers with some room to operate. He's got 15. Back door, Titan loses Rodgers and lays it in. Yes, George Washington players simply turning their heads, too much looking at the ball, not enough finding the ball in the man. Rodgers inside. Now he's going, but not enough. Indiana up big, 64-47. Gus Rodgers is going, but George Washington cannot trade baskets with Indiana, and there Washington getting set up for another dunk is going to get fouled. Big Ten with seven teams in the tournament. Take a look at what they've done. Michigan State tomorrow against Mount St. Mary's. Iowa defeated UAB today. Ohio State winners over Murray State. Minnesota losers over Gonzaga without four of their key players suspended today. Wisconsin tomorrow and Purdue tomorrow as well against Texas. Bob Knight and his Hoosiers thus far doing a nice job representing the Big Ten. Big Ten had some tough early round matchups. But with the exception of Minnesota, they've survived so far. Mike King out of the game. Royale back into the game for GW. Washington with the free throw. Now Washington in double figures. Indiana doing a great job with their balanced offense. And of course, when they score a lot of points, you're going to have a lot of guys in double figures. Three players in double figures right now. Foul on the baseline. Looks like they're going to get Lewis. No, it's going to be Washington. Now, Washington, when he is around Shante Rogers, he just ought to get out of the way because he looks like a big bully, and the officials are going to call it. Shante steps back. Lewis blocked him out. Jimenez jump stop. 15 footer is good. All the basics. You're seeing him here. Lewis wasn't looking at the ball. They threw that one right past his ear. Rogers posting up this time at 5-4. <laughs> he is a delight to watch. He has not had very much room to maneuver this evening, however, Gus. And he still has 17 points. A lot of time remaining. And he asked immediately for the ball. Posting up. <laughs> He's going to try to post up. Had it blocked. Got it back. Nice look, Eterbe, and the left hand off the glass. Gus, I think he got that blocked intentionally. He <laughs> threw it up so he could get it back, you know, and he did. He's the kind of kid you give the benefit of the doubt. 68-49. Inside, Wrecker curling around the screen. Gus Rogers just knows all the tricks. Here he picks up his dribble. He's got nothing to do with the basketball. Watch him, he just tosses it up, and it turns right around and gets it. Uses that body to push off against Lewis and get the ball and create the basket. But I think he did that intentionally, Gus, just so he can get it back. Yeah. Session crunching of Indiana, but <laughs> it's Indiana that's done all the crunching this evening. Very nice, very nice. Nicely done. And the tournament summary. Gonzaga. Their first ever tournament win over Minnesota today. Tom Davis, 11-0 all-time in the first round his last year at Iowa. And the number 10 seeds are 2-0. One of them here, Creighton beating Louisville. In the SEC today, 3-0. Record with 15 points, right at his season average. 16 now. 20-point lead for IU. Indiana maintaining the defensive pressure. Way out. <laughs> Ball fake. Dave Miranda there to clean it up. Well, that was an interesting little maneuver by Royale. Dave Miranda's had a couple of buckets in the second half. Jimenez almost stripped. Nice pass down low. Haston. And he leans in and draws the foul. 
again, Haston operating very effectively down on the inside. You may notice that wrap on his left hand. He cracked a bone in that hand against, Illinois, against Iowa on February 27th, but he played against Illinois in the Big Ten tournament, and obviously it hasn't slowed him down very much. So one of the scores we saw around the country, Connecticut crushing Texas San Antonio. It doesn't look like the coach Calhoun is missed. Well, he may not be missed tonight. Stomach but problems. Don't, that, don't let that get out. <laughs> and a sub in the game, Masherikov replaces Turbay. 71 to 51. And again, Gus, Masherikov back in the ball game. He's in there for his offense, but he becomes immediately a weak link in the defense. He's got those four fouls. Great, great. When he was in foul trouble in the first half, Indiana attacked him very effectively. Rodgers. Air ball, partially blocked by Lewis. Good defense. Lewis running the lane. Bounce pass. Brecker! You want to learn how to run the fast break? That's a perfect example. Gus Lewis did a great job getting out in the lane, but what a play by Recker to fill that lane in the knowledge that he was going to get the basketball. Masherikov, triple team, dribbles out of it, and a reach and foul against IU. Indiana does a great job getting the ball out in transition, but Recker just running down the court, nobody watching him. Recker simply out hustling George Washington. The great pass and the easy play for Recker. Two passes and a dunk. Only one dribble. Not bad. Lewis, coming into this game, had 82 assists over his last 12 games, Gus, with only 21 turnovers during that time period. And he's played up to those standards this evening. Royale, Masherikov spots up for three and buries it. When Masherikov has been able to be in the game, Gus, he showed us a nice offensive repertoire. He's got 17. Post moves inside, three-pointers outside. Washington stripped. Royale into the front court. Sola. Roma. Roma. Roma's sort of a gangly guy, but he did a nice job getting himself stopped, running the court very effectively. Mike Jarvis was at George Washington. He always had a nice center. Inka Dare and Alexander Cool. Both play professional ball. That foul against Shante Rogers. Lewis turning the tables on him a little bit, catching the ball, going right to the basket. I don't think Rogers anticipated that. That's two fouls on Shante Rogers. Bob Knight still doesn't look comfortable over there on that bench with the lead, Gus. Gets Rob Turner off the bench. AJ Guyton in. Jimenez takes a seat. And Luke Recker out of the game as well. And here comes Rob Turner. Boy, what an effort by Recker, Gus. He is just fun to watch. Second shot by Lewis, also good. 11-19 to go, second half of play. Indiana up 75-56. percent shooting 24 fast break points and 22 free throws on 28 attempts what else can you say Gus it's really been a frustrating evening for George Washington Indiana doing a great job getting the ball inside they're running their offense almost to perfection in spite of the fact they had 13 turnovers in the first half getting to the free throw line really frustrating Tom Penders and his colonial Dante Rogers Sherikov pops out inside Roma Jump hook off the glass and in. Nice looking play. Seven feet tall, Roma is a guy that knows what to do with the basketball when he gets it. Nice hands. Good hook shot. Guyton. Guarded by Royale. Oh, 
Washington, great ball, fake and a foul. Roma really went after that one, Gus, but Washington really showing some intelligence out there. Sees the big guy running at him, gives him the fake, and he's going to get a trip to the free throw line. All of these Indiana players, a smart game by each and every one of them that's touched the floor this evening. Washington with 10 points, make it 11. Second free throw good as well. Yes, for George Washington, they got to keep working at it. They still have time to come back in this game, but they've got to make it difficult for Indiana on the on the on Indiana's offensive end. They've got to get some stops, and then when they have the ball, they've got to convert just about every time down. The share call pops out in the corner, across the lane, and the ball is rebounded by Haston. The sheriff Goff has those four personal fouls, guys. He's got to be careful. Driving Turner the from Guyton. Wow. Gus, that's a little bit more flair than we've seen from Indiana tonight, but another easy basket. And Rodgers right penetrating. Shante Rodgers with 19. Washington. Passed up on the 15-foot jump shot. Doesn't need the 15-foot jump shot, Gus. They've been getting much easier ones than that. Layups. Lewis foul. Gus, this looks like something we saw in our first game today with the University of Maryland playing. Guyton just throwing it up. Turner going to get it. Guyton just throwing the ball up there. Turner doing a nice job. That is a perfect pass, Gus. That's a hard play to execute, but that was a perfectly thrown ball by Guyton. Pretty nice camera angle there by Larry <laughs> Cavallina, our director, in the truck. The slam cam. Ray Al checks out. Mike King back into the game. And Michael Lewis, seven points, three assists. Free throw is good. 81-60. Here's Rogers. Penetrating, partially blocked by Lewis. Lewis doing a great job moving his feet. Remember, Rodgers is only five feet four, so if you can get him to rise up for the jump shot, you're in business. And Haston. Haston. Indiana just really pouring it on. And I guess for them, they lost to Illinois in the Big Ten tournament. Probably the best thing that could happen to them for this tournament. Gus, that may be so. Coaches never like to lose a game, but uh, certainly Bob Knight has their full and undivided attention. Just another cut to the basket. Roma did not do a good job defensively. You've got to force Haston away from the basket. You can't let him catch that ball. And Haston with 22 points. Boy, Haston on the inside. Guyton and Recker on the outside. Washington has had a nice game on the inside. Lewis spins out of it. Three on two. Guyton deals it down. And Haston there to clean it up. Haston. Turner missed. But Haston with 24 points. Gus, four Indiana guys touched the ball within three feet of the basket, and there were no GW players in the vicinity. Ball out of bounds, last touch by IU. And again, Gus, it's been a very frustrating evening for George Washington. The game is much harder when the ball doesn't go in the basket. Tom Penders calls a timeout, and it'll be a full timeout. So, 8.53 to go, second half of play. Indiana getting ready for St. John's. in the tournament. In losses, Fred Williams from UAB, 26 points, 14 boards. Dusty Reichardt from Minnesota in a loss, 23 and 17. And Michael Red from Ohio State. They defeated Murray State. He had an excellent game as well. Definitely a hero, Shante Rogers. But it 
It's been all Indiana. Well knocked out of bounds. And we head the other way. George Washington just hasn't been able to put anything together on offense, and I think you've got to credit the Indiana defense for that. They pushed the Colonials out of what they wanted to do early, and then they've really kept the pressure on have the Hoosiers with their ability to score almost at will. Pump fake. Inside, and Odell is fouled. Odell passed up a couple of opportunities, Gus, and... <laughs> Finally, he took it to the basket and got himself walloped. At the line is number 43, Jared Odell. Two shots. So Jared Odell, a freshman from Converse, Indiana. And the first free throw is good. Now let's check out the CBS Sports line. Stat of the game, and it's free throws. Indiana, 28 free throws made. For complete tournament coverage, go to cbs.sportsline.com. 8-17 to go second half. Indiana up 88-60. We may break the 100-point mark before this one is over. King, he's fouled. Gus, I would be surprised if they didn't break the 100-point mark. They're playing very well. We've got more than eight minutes to go, and they're all ready to 88. That free throw discrepancy, guess, really isn't surprising in light of the way that this game has developed. Indiana doing a nice job running their offense, setting the screens. I think George Washington has just gotten tired running into all those screens. They've been a step slow, and when you're a step slow trying to catch up, that's when you start committing foul. Tom Penders told us that uh, he has a lot of respect for Bobby Knight. As a matter of fact, they're friends when he was at Columbia and played Indiana. Bobby took it easy on him and didn't score 100 points. Well, uh, that was eight minutes to go. That wasn't in the NCAA tournament, Gus. AJ oh, Guyton. AJ Guyton. Rogers the other way, partially blocked again by Lewis. And De Miranda there. Gus, once again, Lewis moves his feet, stays right in front of Rogers, and then when Rogers goes up to shoot, Lewis isn't taller than very many people, but he's way taller than Shante Rogers. Loose ball, Lewis from Odell to the basket, deals it down. Three second violation <laughs> against IU. Well, there's a lot of passes in there, everybody passing up shots, and the poor fellas who are playing inside trying to get rebounding position don't know where to go, and they end up staying right in the lane. Shante Rogers gets out of the game, Indiana. They average 74 points per game, they have 90 right now. Guyton goes out of the game. He got to double figures as well, Gus. Baseline jump shot for Mike King and a foul on the floor. And Mike King has really struggled offensively tonight. He got in some foul trouble early. Indiana, they've scored 100 points twice this season. 106 against San Francisco and 102 against Drake. Both wins. Day Miranda at the free throw line. And the first one is good. Now don't forget, coming up tomorrow, second day of the tournament, George Mason in Cincinnati, Delaware, Tennessee. Arkansas State battles Utah and Rhode Island against UNC Charlotte. That should be a great game. 49ers from Charlotte, winners of the Conference USA Tournament. And I think Rhode Island is an awfully tough draw as a number 12 seed with Lamar Odom, one of the fine young players in the country. And the runner for Rob Turner is in. They should put Galen Young for UNC Charlotte on Odom. Should be a pretty good matchup. Young, a very good defensive player. And the turnaround jump shot is good for Mesherikov. 92-67. Masherikov with 19 points. Fife in the game in the corner. Yeah. 
Gus, that Arkansas State-Utah game will be interesting because Utah is playing as well as anyone in the country right at the moment, and Andre Miller as fine a point guard as you'll want to see. Sherikov leading the break. Bounce pass, easy play, Mike King. Boy, Gus, haven't been too many of those for George Washington this evening. The Colonials coming in averaging better than 79 points a game, but very, very few easy opportunities. Odell. And King with the rebound. And a foul inside. Now coming up, the West Region in Seattle. Right now, Weber State beating North Carolina of three versus a 14. They're leading by eight points. Florida had to come back to beat Penn today. They were down by as many as 10. Billy Donovan and his squad getting their first win under his reign. Throw by King is good. That's that Weaver State squad. Really good quickness in the backcourt. They play two wing guards and a point guard, and they are really quick. And North Carolina, not as athletic as some past North Carolina teams, they can be bothered by quickness. And obviously, Weaver State leading by eight, putting together a pretty good game out in Seattle right now. Second free throw by King is good. So in this bracket, Maryland, easy winners over Valpo. Creighton, a 10 seed. Beat Louisville, a 7 seed. Had to come from 13 down in the second half to do it, Gus. And St. John's, easy winners over Samford. They play the winner of this game. Will be Indiana, Gladness. A lot of open shots. Today for the Hoosiers. 94 to 71. Other scores, UCLA up by three over Detroit. Connecticut winning easily. And look at that, Weber State with seven minutes to go. Harold the show Arsenal really putting on a show <laughs> today for Weber State. As are these Indiana Hoosiers. And this guy, Haston. <laughs> 26 points. I don't know if I'm an Indiana fan. I, I'm saying Haston saved some. Well, that's right, Gus. These guys, they've got to turn around now and play again on Saturday. Three. And Rogers for right three. And they're. Rodgers, we saw him at practice yesterday, and it was amazing. Obviously, he's very proficient shooting threes with his right hand, but he's also very proficient shooting threes with his left hand. If he took 15 threes, folks, with his left hand, he must have made about nine. Yeah, he sure did. Unbelievable. <laughs> with the rebound. And he continues to push the basketball. The Atlantic 10's player of the year. Five feet four. Sherikov wraps it around. And De Miranda misses, reloads, missed again. Well, that's the kind of night it's been for George Washington, Gus. De Miranda had three cracks at it and couldn't get it down. Wrecker lobbed it down low. Turner lays it up and in. Turner not leaving anything to chance that time, Gus. Rogers pull up three. Dante Rogers with 25 points and a 20-second timeout. And the other side of the south bracket in Indianapolis. Auburn beating Winthrop. They take on Oklahoma State. Winners today over Syracuse. Ohio State waiting for the winner of the UCLA-Detroit game. UCLA up by only three against those Tough Titans from the University of Detroit Mercy. And that we expected that to be a hard-fought basketball game, Gus, and obviously it has been. And I think that's the word, toughness, that characterizes that De Detroit squad as well as any other. If UCLA, UCLA wins that when they're going to earn their way into the second round of the NCAA tournament. Bounce pass inside and a whistle and foul. Haston heads to the line. 
from Lewis. And I really like the way Michael Lewis plays. He never forces anything. He can do everything well, defense, shoot, and pass. Gus, one thing that he has done very effectively today is to get the ball into the offensive end quickly. George Washington has been back on its heels almost the entire evening, and one of the reasons is Lewis pushing the ball up the court. Haston with the free throw. And a timeout on the floor, 3.42 to go, second half of play. Indiana, Talk about. <laughs> oh, okay. Ninety-nine seventy-seven, Indiana leading George Washington. Gus Johnson along with Dan Bonner, and if Indiana is able to hold on, <laughs> which I suspect they will, it sets up a matchup on Saturday between two storied programs. St. John's and IU. Yes, it sure does. Uh, Indiana with the better tradition in the NCAA tournament. St. John's number four all time in wins in college basketball. And this Indiana squad, with their rich NCAA tournament tradition, they've only scored 100 points in an NCAA tournament game on two occasions. One of those years, the national championship year of 1987, they got scored 107 points. Rogers hits that one. That's Indiana's high. They beat Auburn 107 to 90 in a second round game. The other 100 point game, a final four year for Indiana. They beat UCLA 106 to 79 to go to the final four in 1992, losing to Duke in the final four, the national semifinals. They're well on their way. We've got three minutes left in the game. They could exceed both the 106 and 107 total. Inside, Turner. Baseline cutter, easy point for him. Turner with eight points. 101-80. Rodgers again. UCLA now extending their lead to six points. Baron Davis turning it on. 14 points and four rebounds. Richard Hamilton, the Big East co-player of the year, along with Tim James from Miami. He has 28. And look at this one. North Carolina trailing Weaver State. And the show has certainly put one on tonight. 30 points. Harold Arsenault. Sherikov with the free throw. Two and 43 to go in the second half of play. 101 to 83. A lot of points scored in this game. Defense, 
Back door, Wrecker, easy bucket. There's one bounce pass after another, Gus. Very unselfish, this Indiana team. As the... That is at least the third time in this game that Lewis has blocked a shot by Sante, Shante Rogers. And here come the sub. Lewis with the pass to Hasten, and he just drops it to Wrecker, who moves to the basket. Wrecker always moving without the basketball, and good things result when you do. Wrecker, a 20-point performance. Hasten has 27. And Hasten, what a great effort by him. Dante Rogers backs up, takes the three, in and out. All rebounded by Odell. Lewis still on the floor for IU. Along with Antoine Randall L., he's the starting quarterback for the Indiana football team. Gus, the amazing thing about Randall L., he played the entire football season for <laughs> Indiana and didn't get hurt. And with the basketball season, he's already broken his hand twice. He scores the basket there. Somebody asked him about the how incongruous that seemed to be. Mishirikov scores there, and he says, well, basketball's a tough sport in Indiana. <laughs> Antoine Randallel. Mishirikov with 24 points. 125 to go, second half of play. Indiana moves on to take on the Red Storm from St. John. Should be a good matchup. athleticism of the Red Storm along with the great fundamentals and athleticism of this Indiana team. Inside and Odom fouled going to the basket with two seconds remaining on the shot clock. So the second round is all set. Indiana St. John Saturday's tip time 12-10. Game one of the day followed by Creighton and Maryland. Two versus a 10 and a three versus a six. And for Indiana, something that they will be thinking about, that game at 12-10 on Saturday, we're almost at midnight here tonight, Definitely. Eastern time, and so not a lot of recovery time for Bob Knight's crew. And you know what, he was really upset with that. I talked to him before the game, rather at practice yesterday. And he fears his team not getting enough rest, and he cited an instance in the NCAA tournament where they lost to Virginia one year after beating North Carolina late, had to come back and play the next, uh, a day later, early in the morning, and he said they were always a step behind. And obviously what they're gonna try to do is make sure the kids get plenty of fluids and get plenty of rest, but it's gonna be a while before they're able to go to sleep, Gus. You just don't turn it off from playing in a, participating in something like this. They get pumped up and it takes a while for that adrenaline rush to stop. So with 51 and three tenths of a second remaining, the great career of the small American is starting to wind down. Shante Rogers. He leaves though, with got 28 points tonight. And he's been everything to George Washington. Back door, Otto. I guess Indiana now has set the new school high for points in an NCAA tournament game. Rogers inside. And the basket good for Royale. 26 seconds to go. Shot clock turned off. Fife. Randall L on the baseline. Side. All movement there, and Mashirikov with the rebound. Gets it to Rogers with one to go from, and that'll do it. The Indiana Hoosiers have defeated the Colonials from George Washington, 108 to 88. That sets up a big date on Saturday with St. John's, and the Chevrolet most viable players of the game are. Shante Rogers from GW, 25 points, four rebounds, two assists, and Kirk Haston, 27 and nine. Bobby Knight with a talk to the little general. Now let's go to Greg Gumbel in New York.
gamble a little bit, and we were able to take advantage of that. It wasn't as though we just beat people. We took advantage of uh, some mistakes they made defensively, and it was a good offensive game for us. And now the St. John's matchup looming. What do you look for out of that club? I really haven't seen St. John's play at all. That's what we're going to go back and take a look at right now. And finally, Richardson, is he going to be ready to go Saturday? I have no idea. That I don't know. All right, thanks, Coach. And we're going to talk to the high flyer here. There's a number four in the south region at Auburn that is doing a lot of dunks, Chris Porter. And you're dunking a lot tonight. What's going on with that? Well, I think uh, basically, guys, we got out in transition and uh, got some easy buckets. Guys made some good passes. And we really wanted to utilize getting uh, – we knew they were a running team, but we thought we could do the same to them. I think we did a nice job. And what about St. John's? What about that matchup? Well, you know, obviously uh, we put all of our focus on George Washington, but we have seen them play throughout the year. And we know they're a great ball club. They're well coached with Coach Jarvis, and, you know, they got a great player like Cartes. So uh, it's going to be a tough matchup. They're a great team, but we're just hoping to come out, play hard, do the best we can, and see what happens. All right, thanks, Luke. No problem. Thank you. Okay. You're... okay. Gotcha. Coach Jack, I said hi when you talked to him tonight. 